Hi everyone, welcome to the second AI Academy video. Last time we talked about the data science team at Oscube, who they are, what is their mission, and today we are going to talk about satellite imagery and artificial intelligence. How can we combine them and where is the challenge? So first, let's define artificial intelligence. In the scope of this video, artificial intelligence will mean deep learning. And by deep learning, I mean the use of a deep neural network. Second, let's define satellite imagery. Right now, there are satellites orbiting around the Earth at more than 600 kilometers above the surface. Each satellite has its own sensor, which gives you specific data for each satellite. They are taking a picture of the Earth at a given place and at a given time. So now that we have defined both artificial intelligence and satellite imagery, how can we work with both of them? Let's take the same example as in the previous video, vehicle detection in the satellite imagery. We are going to divide the subject into three parts. The first part will be why satellite images are specific data. The second part is why they are challenging to work with. And finally, we are going to see how deep learning can be the key to solve this challenge. Let's start with why satellite images are a specific data. First, if you compare a photography and a satellite image, you will see that usually a satellite image has much more pixels than a classical photography. And that considering that a photography can already have thousands of pixels. Second point, if you compare a photography and a satellite image, you will see that you don't have the same number of channels. What do I mean? In a classical image, you will have three channels. One for the red color, one for the blue color, and one for the green color. You have all these challenges in the satellite image, but you may have others, and dozens of others. Also, when a satellite is taking a picture of the Earth, you may want to know where is the place. So you will have to consider georeferenced images. These images will first be recorded in an elliptical frame. And from this elliptical frame, you will have to take your coordinates into a flat Earth frame. And this allows us to introduce the ground resolution. When a satellite is looking down at the Earth's surface, each of its sensor's pixel is able to record a certain distance on the surface. Depending on the satellite, it could be 30 cm or 50 cm. And then you just have to pick the satellite of your choice according to the use case you want to work with. All this information is recorded in the metadata of the image. But in this metadata, you may also find the sun angle, atmospheric condition, the satellite position, for a few examples. At Oscube, we have a database that considers all this metadata and aggregates them for all the single images we have. But at Oscube, we do even more. In our database, we also have the land cover. The land cover is what you will see on the ground surface when looking at a specific area. For instance, it could be the sea, but also a desertic area or an urbanized area. So now, you know everything about the specificities of the satellite images. So let's see why they are challenging to work with. First thing, when you take a satellite image and look at the small objects in it, these small objects are, for instance, car, while car are supposed to be big objects for us. So a car in a satellite image is just a few pixels. If you take a look at an aerial image, there it will be easier because the resolution may reach 10 cm, but it's not the case on a satellite image. Secondly, when a satellite records an image of a specific area at a specific time, you only have one shot. What does it mean? It means that if the weather is bad, if you have clouds, if you have snow or haze, you will have to deal with it. And your vehicle detector will have to be able to see the car in the haze or in the snow. Another important thing is the position of the sun, because your image may be overexposed. Or, on the contrary, you may have huge shadows in your image, and your vehicle detector will have to be able to detect vehicles even in the shadows. Last thing, when the satellite looks down at the Earth, and when the line between the sensor of the satellite and the center of the image makes a right angle with the ground surface, we say that the satellite is at nadir, 
and this is the position of the sensor where you will get the best resolution. But what happens if the orientation of the sensor changes? Then the resolution won't be as good as at Nadir, and in the end you may have buildings, for instance, hiding objects such as vehicles. Now, you know everything about the specificities of the satellite images and also about why they are so challenging. Now remember, we want to detect all the vehicles in satellite images. If you want to do that, you may try with computer vision methods. And of course, you might be able to detect few vehicles, but all of them, it will be really hard. Why? First thing, as we said before, a vehicle in a satellite image will be represented by only a few pixels, on only a few features. So you might not have enough information to use classical computer vision method. Second thing, the context around all these vehicles will always change. And this is where deep learning has proven to be a great solution for such use cases. And this is why we use deep learning at Earthcube. When working with deep learning and images, usually you will turn towards conventional neural networks or an evolution, such as capsule networks. But with satellite images, you will have to keep in mind three things. The first one, as we said before, our images are really big. This means that your network won't be able to process all of it at once, and you will have to divide it in smaller tiles before putting it in your network. The second thing is that your image may have more than three color channels, not just red, blue, and green colors. So your whole pipeline will have to be able to take care of all of these channels and to take them into account or not. And the last thing, but the most important, is that you have to consider that these data are georeferenced. So, in the end, you want to have your vehicle detection geopositioned not only in the image, but on the Earth's surface. So all your AI pipeline will have to be able to manage this type of data. If you are able to manage all of this, the specificities of the data, how they are challenging, and then to build your own AI pipeline considering all these specificities, then you will have the good combination to be able to extract information from satellite images. We are reaching the end of this video. Thank you for watching and we hope you enjoyed it.